Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Green Bites. I'm your friend Amazon Shaktivel and in this video, we are going to see about steps. In the previous videos, we have seen about jobs, right? We understood uh, jobs are basically the constructing blocks for your workflow. The same way, the steps are basically uh, the, the main blocks for you constructing your jobs. So workflow is composed of jobs and jobs are composed of one or multiple steps. And that's what we have here. Again, we can use already existing uh, steps or actions from the GitHub Actions Marketplace. So it's not that uh, for everything we need to create our work. So there are almost all, uh, for all the events, we have steps and actions already created and pushed it to GitHub Actions Marketplace. Let's say you want to pull some project. You want to set some Java version. You want to set some Node version. You want to set some Python version. Everything is already uh, created by someone and already contributed to the GitHub Actions Marketplace. So most probably, uh, you won't be in a position to create your own uh, actions or steps unless it is very customized, right? And it also have uh, given you the liberty to create your own stuff. Let's say uh, you want to build something for your own, you can also do that. And if you find that going to be uh, helpful for others, you can also contribute back to the GitHub Actions Marketplace, right? So without wasting much time, let's get into the uh, IntelliJ. And this is a very simple workflow which I used to run the unit test. And if you notice, there is a job, uh, the job name is build, and uh, sorry, the job name uh, is, is run unit test. Um, so now it's going to run on Ubuntu latest, and it composed of steps, right? Steps basically indicates there may be one or more steps uh, inside that. For example, if you know one indentation inside that, uh, there is a step that is called as action check check out v2 right so this is a check what what it does like they didn't give any name for the step a name for the step is optional but again if you notice here they have given a clear description on what it does it's basically setting up jdk 11 but this one uh, doesn't really uh, tell us what is so maybe you can just copy it and then you can open your browser you can just search it in google and when you, when you click on that the github link will tell you the more information about them. For example, this is an uh, this action checks out your repository under GitHub workspace. So you can your workflow can access it. That's pretty cool, right? So uh, let's say you have your your uh, GitHub, right? So your actions were, were, uh, were configured in a GitHub repository. If you want to pull that repository into your runner, you can simply use this actions. And it also has a lot of other uh, parameters that you can pass. So you can mention with, and then you can say uh, repository. By default, it's, it checks the github.repository, but let's say you want to pull different repository, uh, you want to give, uh, you want to, let's say you have a multi-module Maven project, you want to uh, only pull some part of it. Like you can you can give the, uh, you know, a path or, or, or the repository that you want to define here. And then the reference token, let's say you are pulling different repository. Uh, you don't have, let's say uh, I'm in a repository A, but I want to pull a repository B, then you can also use a token uh, from the B repository. Uh, that personal access token you can create from the settings, right? So uh, let's say there are other parameters that you can configure and you can you can go ahead and read uh, uh, more about this actions, right? Uh, but basically this is a very simple thing that we want to do here. Uh, so we are basically uh, pulling the project that we want to run. Uh, but I always prefer using a name uh, so, so everyone can, uh, checks out the project uh, in the runner, right? So the runner. So when you use name, so you don't have to mention this. So it's just very careful. Like whenever you're using hyphen, it indicates there is a step here. Uh, this step uh, also uses this. Okay. So don't use something like this. It might not throw error here, but when you try to push it to the uh, get up, uh, then it will throw there is a syntax error and then you have to closely observe there is a problem. Okay. So now there is a, each slash here indicates there is a step. Okay. So either it can start with the name or it can also start with users or whatever. It can also start with run, whatever. But you know, there is, this indicates there is a step. Good. Now, uh, I want to like, there is a name for this. It is setting up Java 11. If you want to learn more about this, you can search it in Google. But let's say you want to set up Java 14, you can also mention Java 14. So the description also you can change. So if you want different uh, 
you know version of java like different flavor of java like uh, open jdk or or oracle jdk or something else uh, you can also uh, you know pass that as a parameter like i don't know what to pass then go ahead and check the github repository so that's the best way like, so now you only have options for you to pass the entry point and arcs but yeah you can basically go and check this repository to understand about it. and the third one here is run unit test this is a very simple thing and if you notice we are not using any uh actions or checkout actions set up java and all that because it's a very customized event and I directly want to run uh, this particular command in the runner. Okay, so that's it. So by default, all the runners that we use have Java Maven, sorry, Maven install and stuff, right? So we can directly execute our Maven stuff here. Good. So now if you also notice, let's say if there is a failure here, what happens? If there is a failure, the other two, two steps will not get executed. But let's say you, you don't want to do that. Let's say this, this step is a very minimal or not a major step and it that doesn't impact your life of other steps, then you can simply add one more condition, uh, continue on error as true, which means even if this step fails, uh, the GitHub worker will assume this has passed and it will move further. So that's the whole aspect. Of it. And let's say you want to uh, time bound and step then you can use time bound, uh, time out minutes and then mention five, which means if it takes more than five minutes, it will it'll cancel the workflow, right? So, and apart from that, whatever the options it has, uh, let's say working directly, let's say you want to execute this particular step uh, only under certain conditions. So if, uh, if uh, whatever, kidup.actor is Amutin, then I want to execute this. So you want to give some conditions, you can also do that, right? So that's that's basically uh, you can use if for. But normally when you are using if, always use it above the users. So so it will be a little uh, easy, right? So uh, for you to understand, hey, there is a name of this project. So if this condition matches, then use this check uh, action and then perform this particular thing, right? So that will be more easy. So, and apart from that, you can also have an option to shut the working directory uh, cell uh, I'll tell you what it is. For example, let's say I want to run this command. Okay. Uh, I have pulled, let's assume I have pulled Windows status. Okay. Uh, Windows status. Okay. Uh, in, instead of executing this in the default command prompt, what I want to do um, is first I want to change the shell. I want to use power shell instead of the normal command prompt. So I can basically give this and so that this command will execute in power shell instead of the normal shell. Two. Uh, let's say my my pom.xml file is not located uh, in the in the root directory like this instead it is located in some other directory so i have to basically go to that particular directory to execute this command right so i can mention uh, there is a runner directory you go inside that and then try to execute this command so this is how we can use the working directory uh, parameter and what else we have we have we have covered this users environment let's say you want to uh, specify certain environment variables for a step you can also do that when you specify the environment variables uh, it overrides the environment variables from your job and the workflow right you can you can specify environment variables and then you can say uh, first name uh, whatever okay. you can do all that right so this particular environment variable will be only applicable for this Okay, it will override already existing environmental variables in your job section and the workflow section. We have covered this in detail uh, in, the, in the previous videos, right? So that's how easy it is. So, so set, steps are basically the buildings, building block for your jobs, okay? And also one more thing, let's say you want to execute multiple uh, run commands. Uh, so let's say I want to execute uh, multiple run commands. You can do slash and then you can say um, run colon uh, slash see this pipe symbol indicates that there is going to be a lot of uh, commands that i'm going to run so maven uh, mdn hyphen v first i want to check the maven version and then i want to run this so if you want to execute multiple uh, commands like this you can use pipe symbol and then do this okay because these are all part of just single step okay good so that's all about steps in our next video we will try to create workflows uh, for different needs from the automation, right? So we can apply, you know, apply this for any programming language or even for development. So the whole idea is 
we are trying to you know fit this into our test automation workspace so that we can you know understand it really well okay thanks guys thanks for watching if you really like the video please do share with your friends uh and share your feedback to me as well that will be will be help, helpful for me to create more videos thank you again uh guys bye bye